Hi, this is Ed Driscoll. Welcome to Silicon Graffiti. We're talking today with Colonel Austin Bay, co-author, along with Jim Dunnigan, of the perennial bestseller, A Quick and Dirty Guide to War, first published in 1985 and updated with a newly revised fourth edition last year. Austin is also the author of a new syndicated essay titled, Iran in Limbo. And Austin, to pick up on one of the topics in your column, how do the citizens of Iran feel about their leaders today versus, say, 14 or 15 years ago? Uh, Jim Dunnigan and I happen to be working on the Iran chapter for the third edition of A Quick and Dirty Guide to War, which uh, came out in 1996. And this is in 1995 that we have this conversation. Jim and I remember it. Matter of fact, uh, last week, uh, Strategy Page recorded a podcast uh, with Jim and me, and this became one of the subjects, Ed. Uh, Jim remembered the conversation. We only touched on it briefly, but it was 1995, and I said, Jim, take a look at the evidence for dissatisfaction in Iran with uh, the, the Khomeini regime. Even though uh, the Ayatollah was, uh, was gone, we've got the, uh, the, the dictatorship uh, structure. And Jim says, you know, Austin, it's there, but they aren't ready, meaning the Iranian people, they aren't ready to die for liberty yet. Now, that's cold, that's blunt, but Dunnigan was accurate. There's a mystery, Ed, and it's something we don't, we don't understand. I talked about it in the column as a gray rainbow of escalation. Where is that point reached where you move from mass dissatisfaction to sustained revolution? Uh, all revolutions have martyrs of some type, and I don't mean the, to use the uh, utterly uh, devalued sense of martyr in the way the uh, Islamist uh, regime in Tehran uses it, but possibly Nada, the uh, beautiful woman who was killed, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, 12, 13 days ago in one of the early, uh, early demonstrations. Every revolution needs centering figures. Now, I said the plural there. But uh, one figure has emerged uh, here in, in uh, Iran, and it's a very curious figure. He is a curious figure, and that's uh, Hussein Musawi. Musawi has a very odd arc. He was a prime minister in the uh, Khomeiniist uh, regime in the uh, uh, 1980s. He was uh, an Iranian revolutionary. But over time, Ed, and let me just talk about it in, in a, I don't know Mr. Musawi's psyche, but I do know that people change. Uh, they're driven politicians by personal ambition. They also sense opportunity. It is possible that Mr. Musawi becomes the centering figure for a sustained revolution. I don't know. Austin, how much did our toppling of Saddam Hussein in Iraq fuel the revolt in Iran? Your question's extremely good. You're aware of things that I have said uh, uh, over the years about uh, <laughs> 1990s, about the nature of Saddam's regime. Also, uh, something I would like to point out now in, in uh, light of some comments yesterday by President Barack Obama about uh, U.S. and Iraqi success um, in, uh, in Iraq, one of the things is that people utterly forget is that we have been at war with Saddam's regime since August 2nd, 1990. Desert Storm was a curious kind of armistice, and it was after 9-11, how tenable is it to try and keep uh, in a curious kind of containment that was winnowing politically and uh, militarily uh, to keep, uh, keep Saddam uh, contained. The point about that is, is that we successfully toppled Saddam. Of course, the al-Qaeda and sodomist insurgency came on. It was ferocious. The attempt, particularly by al-Qaeda, and you can take a look at um, uh, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi's uh, letter of February 2004, he saw the only way out of al-Qaeda's box was to ignite a sectarian Shia versus Sunni civil war in Iraq. He failed. What we have, and look, May 2006 is the key date. Everyone wants to talk about the surge. Surge solidified this, but you stood up an Iraqi de democracy in May 2006, uh, a democracy out of the absolute uh, hideous destruction of Saddam's, uh, Saddam's tyranny. That brought hope to the Middle East. That brought genuine change to the Middle East. And don't think everyone in the Middle East, including the Iranians, a little sidebar on this, the Iranians look down on the Arabs. They always have. They're the Persians and the Arabs are those 
um, Semites on the other side of the Tigris or somewhere over there in Mesopotamia, and rightly all of Mesopotamia belongs to Iran. I'm speaking as if I were a Iranian, uh, Iranian supranationalist, uh, I suppose. But uh, they noticed, and that is change. And there it is. There's the example. And you see Nuri al-Maliki's government, despite the, I think, obviously wrong uh, attacks on it by major elements in the American, uh, American media since uh, May of uh, 2006. Um, you see its success, and the Iranians see its success. Now, it's tough to gauge what that does in the streets of Tehran, what it does in Isfahan. But, but Ed, that really is hope and change brought to, to reality, not just a rhetorical gesture. Austin, last questions. What's happening with Iran's efforts to acquire the bomb, and then what happens? The, the bottom line is it's dangerous. The other element of that bottom line is and dangerous is, is that the, the West, the sane, the constructive on the planet in the first uh, decade of the 21st century can't allow a nutcase regime led by uh, the likes of uh, uh, the Ayatollah Khamenei and uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad have a nuclear weapon. And you can see how tenuous their own control is inside Iran. You can see what kind of tyrants they are. You can see their own lack of, uh, 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 of stability in some way, whether it can be done diplomatically, whether it can be done in conjunction with a nascent Iranian revolution, uh, whether it has to be done in some way by uh, selected military strikes. I don't know. I don't want to see that but they cannot be allowed to get a nuclear weapon. Austin Bay is the co-author, along with Jim Dunnigan, of A Quick and Dirty Guide to War, recently released in its fourth edition. He'll be keeping track of the situation in Iran in his syndicated column at www.creators.com and at townhall.com. And don't forget to visit his website at austinbay.net. And Austin, thanks for stopping by Silicon Graffiti. Uh, thanks. Uh, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to be on uh, your great program. For Silicon Graffiti, I'm Ed Driscoll.